Let's take our Bibles and turn to Genesis chapter 30, the book of Genesis chapter 30. This morning I'd like to preach a message called, The Person That Others Can't Live Without. I was in my Bible reading on Friday morning about 4.30 in the morning, sitting right here on this platform, having opened my desk up and was in the Word of God and listening to the Word of God. And it was about that time the Lord directed me to Genesis chapter 30 and verse number 27. And as I heard these words read, the Lord began stirring in my heart a little bit of an understanding from this passage. In essence, He led me to break our series crowned to enter into Genesis chapter 30 and verse number 27 with this message on the person that others can't live without. And I want to challenge you today to be a person that others can't live without. The Bible says in Genesis 30 and verse 27, Laban said unto him, Jacob, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thine eyes, tarry. For I have learned by experience that the Lord hath blessed me for thy sake. Did you catch the end of that verse, verse 27? Laban says, I have learned by experience that the Lord hath blessed me for thy sake. And as I began to ponder all of the goodness of God in my life, I am reminded today that I am so blessed because of the many people in my life who have the touch of God on them. These are people that I need to learn that I can't live without. I want to be a person that others can't live without. And I want to be the reason why God blesses other people. Now I understand that on the eternal spiritual level, the person that you and I can't live without is the Lord Jesus Christ. And all God's people said... Amen to that. You cannot be saved by your good works of which you have done. There's not a single person that will ever enter into heaven based upon what they have done. But they will enter into heaven based upon their faith in Jesus Christ. But on a human level, the biblical principle is this. There are people in our life that because of their testimony, we have blessings in our life because they're living for God the way that they should be living for God. I remember the evangelism days of my life and I remember a pastor calling me and I get off the phone and I begin to think, man, the only reason why he's asked me to come back is because Rachel Smith's my wife. Amen. Blessed because of someone else. Hey, can I remind you, husbands in here, that the very reason why your family might be blessed today is because you have a wife and you have the mother of your children in your home that is honoring God with their life. That is a person that wants to obey God and follow Him. Man, I don't know how many churches I were, was in that when in evangelism I'd walk in that place and it seemed like there was a shortage of men. But what you had in there was some God-fearing ladies that were keeping the family together spiritually. Now I'm thankful today that though we do find a little bit of that here at Crossroads, I'm thankful today that we see some men in this church that are willing to stand for Jesus Christ. Amen. And be the man of the household that they ought to be. As I think deeply about Genesis chapter 30 and verse 27, Laban said, I have learned by experience, Jacob, that the Lord hath blessed me for thy sake. And what he's going to say is this, Jacob, I don't want you to leave. I don't want you to go away from me. I want you to stay here because God has blessed me because of you. Now think about this. Isn't that statement amazing? 
Laban did not want Jacob to leave his presence because Laban had experienced prosperity and blessings in his life because of Jacob. Jacob worked tirelessly for Laban's daughter. Laban abused the hard labor of Jacob. Jacob was tricked. Jacob ended up working extra time to get the, do- the, the girl he wanted. Years later, that God would move Jacob from Laban. And Laban didn't want Jacob to leave. Why? Again, Laban realized that he had prosperity in his property, his possessions, and his person because of the man that Jacob was for God. Here's my question as I begin by way of introduction. And I want you to search your heart today. Question, are people eager to get rid of you or are people wanting to hold on to you because of the type of person you are? Are people eager to get rid of you or are they wanting to hold on to you as long as they possibly can because of the type of person that you are? That leads me to say spouses work tirelessly to be the type of spouse that your spouse can't live without. Church member work tirelessly to be the type of church member that your pastor can't live without. Pastoral staffs out there work tirelessly to be the type of pastoral staff that your pastor can't live without friend of a friend work tirelessly to be the type of friend that your friend can't live without employee work tirelessly to be the type of employee that your employer can't live without here's the moral of the story in Jacob's life no matter the circumstances be the type of person that others can't live without. As I look into the Word of God, I see three simple reasons why Jacob was the type of person that Laban could not live without. Go back two chapters to Genesis chapter 28 and look with me, if you would, at verse number 7. Point number 1, Jacob was moved by listening. Notice what it says in Genesis 28 and verse number 7. And Jacob, what's the next word, church? Obeyed his father and his mother and was gone down into Padan Aram. Now when I read that verse in the scripture, I understand that there's been an issue of quarrel between Esau and Jacob. And Jacob, that great deceiver, has stolen the birthright. And mom got on board with it. And mom led the great crusade to deceive their father in the giving over that birthright. But now as I look at Jacob, I see that Jacob's mother and father say unto him, Son, you need to go somewhere else. Son, you need to leave this place. And mom and dad get on board with their son. And the mom and dad say, Son, this is what you need to do. And can I remind you, before Jacob was ever a man that somebody could not live without, he was a man that listened to his mom and and dad. He was moved by listening. My first point underneath this point is listening to his parents led him to his dream girl. If you were to read this chapter it says in verse 7 that Jacob obeyed his father and mother. Can I remind you it was not because of a good circumstance he left where he was. But when he left where he was he was led and met up with a lady named Rachel. Hey, can I encourage every young person in here, no matter your circumstance, no matter your story, be a young person that is willing to listen to the wisdom of mom and dad. Specifically in this little book of the Bible, we find a man who ends up meeting a future bride of his life. And I just so happen to know that moms and dads understand a little bit more than sometimes we think they do when we are teenagers. 
Amen. There ought to be some moms and dads shaking their heads right now. There ought to be some teenagers who begin to do this and begin to think maybe my mom and dad are a little bit smarter than I've been putting them up to be in my mind. Hey, moms and dads, we got to win the child's heart over. But let me say, I realize that there's a way that I could act that when Lydia gets older, she may say, I want to listen to it. But there's a way that I could act that Lydia may say, I I'm not going to listen to that from mom and dad at all. Young person in here, can I challenge you that when your mom and dad speak, listen to them. If you ever come across a young person that you get a desire for, it'd be a healthy thing for you to go up to dad, to go up to mom, and to ask them a question, mom, well, what do you think about this person? Dad, well, what do you think about this person? And if they have to say, who in the world are you talking about? It probably hasn't been a very good start already. Here's a mom and a dad that wanted the best thing for their children. And I believe every mom and dad in here wants the best thing for their children that they could ever think of. But I realize today that not every child is going to listen. Not every child is going to be obedient. But can I show you a man of God in the Bible that made one choice that then brought him to be the person that Laban couldn't live without. And it was a choice of obedience. He was moved by listening. Listening. He was moved to his dream girl. Listening to his parents led him to opportunity. As Jacob was told by mom and dad, go over this way. Here's a man that went over that way. And when he got to where he was going, he found prosperity. He found blessing. He listened to his mom and dad. Listening to his parents led him to prosperity. Led him to opportunity. Led him him to his dream girl. I remember being a teenager working at Dairy Queen as an ice cream engineer making those blizzards and stacking those ice cream lumps on top of ice cream cones and I remember that even though I was a young person that on the outside others may have patted their back on the inside there was deceit. On the inside there was disobedience. On the inside there was desire for my flesh and myself alone and there would be times where I knew I was doing wrong and the most thing that I did not want to happen was I didn't want mom and dad to find out what I was doing Hey child in here you know what I'm talking about. For those of you who on the outside look good but on the inside you understand who you are you must realize something don't you when you pillow your head at night and you have a guilty conscience before God and before your authorities like mom and dad something's wrong. Here's my question. Are you going to allow your heart to get so hard that you're not impacted by the very thought of what mom and dad thinks about what's going on? Are you going to allow your heart to get so hard that you won't even allow what God thinks about your situation and your decision to move you in the right direction? Some of you have been up to our house and uh, north of Tanner's out there and there's a room in that home that used to be painted, get this, the color orange. Mom and dad said to a teenage boy, what color do you want your room? I said orange. And it became orange. Wow. They were really gracious to me. They didn't have to allow that to happen to their home. But it happened to their home. And I remember one night coming home real late from working at Dairy Queen and laying on that twin bed in my room. And at that time that bed was up against the window that looks out to uh, never eat soggy waffles. East. And as I was looking out east out the window I sat there on, uh, laying on my pillow thinking with a guilty conscience, conscience I'm not right with mom and dad I'm not right with God I'm not in a good place and at that moment in my life I allowed the proper fear of God to begin to work in my heart Mom and dad were leading the youth at that time in my life and from Crossroads Baptist Church and we went over to where Pastor Samples was leading the youth group at Bayview Baptist Church and Pastor Samples had a man named Scott Pauley come in and Scott Pauley preached the word of God. I remember the night very well. We had preaching on both ends of the service like per perfect book ends and right in the middle we had pizza. Preaching, pizza, preaching. I 
kind of like that format nowadays as well. But as we had that little opportunity to gather together, I remember the last message of the night was like this. Proverbs 28, 1. The wicked flee when no man pursueth. Guilty conscience. The wicked flee when no man pursueth. They're doing wrong. The wicked flee when no man pursueth. But the righteous are bold as a lion. I don't remember the meat of the message. But here's what I remember young people. God in that time of preaching. And in that time of invitation. Through a man that I did not know. Through a church that I did not frequent. God used those people in my life. He used the parents of my life to bring me to that church. We sat there in the back of that church and I'd look up and down the aisle and I'd see others that I knew very well acting like they didn't care. But God was working on my heart. I knew what I needed to do. I knew the wrong direction that I had gone. And I sat there with God speaking to me like this. Justin, either you serve me with your life or... Dot, dot, dot. Guess what? God didn't have to tell me what the dot, dot, dot said. God didn't have to tell me what the outcome would be if I didn't yield to Him. Friends, at that very moment, when I gave my life over to serving Him, I realized there's things in my life I need to get out of. And there's one thing I knew most importantly above all else. Mom and Dad approve of this, so I'm going there. I submitted to go where mom and dad wanted me to go to Bible college, Pensacola Christian College. And I walked on that campus, just a freshman, homeschooled the majority of my life from fifth grade on, and I stepped onto that campus, and a new era began for Justin Smith. A couple years later, I'm glad it was a couple years later, I met this, uh, this brown-haired, brown-eyed girl. She didn't know who I was, and I'm glad she didn't know who I was at the very beginning. But as time went on, I'm sure we passed by each other. We were right next to each other practically in the yearbook, Rachel Smith, Justin Smith, Alaska, Illinois, pretty girl, I don't know about this guy. And there she was in my life, my dream girl. I'm glad I listened to mom and dad. It almost came to that point where I did not. And friends, I want to encourage you, just like Jacob finds himself to be a person that others can't live without, it began when he was moved by listening to the proper authority. And maybe today, it's not mom and dad you need to listen to, but maybe today, it's the authority of the Word of God. The Bible says, Thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Jacob was literally moved by listening to his authorities. We need spiritual authorities in our life. Number two, look at Genesis 29. Number two, Genesis 29. And as I move to Genesis 29, I want you to see that Jacob was motivated by love. Look at what it says in Genesis 29 verse 18. And Jacob, what church? Loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel thy younger daughter. And Laban said, it is better that I give her to thee than that I should give her to another man. Abide with me. Hilariously reading into that verse. Well... If this is what we have to deal with in Jacob, I guess as a future father-in-law, I guess this is all I got, so I'll use him. I'll give him Rachel. I think about this, though, and understand it was so much more than that. But in Jacob's heart, there was a love that was beginning to brew. The Bible says in verse number 19, It is better I give her to thee. Verse 20, Jacob served seven years for Rachel. And notice the statement, They seemed unto him but a few days for the love he had to her. Jacob was motivated by love. There's some times where people come to Rachel and I, and we begin to scratch our heads, and we begin to think, How can 
can a relationship find itself in that place when we look at our relationship that's motivated by love we are encouraged today to understand that we haven't looked at the 10 almost 11 years and said oh how grudgingly I've lived it or oh how I've hated the marriage relationship or oh how I can't believe I'm with this person friends I find it hard to joke about my relationship with my bride because I love my bride I'm thankful for my bride I appreciate the good thing that God has given to me. Whosoever findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor from the Lord. Friends, again, I am blessed in this life by the very wife that God has given to me. I have obtained favor from God because of that lady right there. And friends, I'm telling you, all it takes is a decision. All it takes is stepping out to say, I want to be the person that other people people can't live without instead of the person that others want to get rid of. I've been around this thing long enough to know that there's some spouses that just can't wait to get rid of the other spouse. I've been around this thing long enough to understand that there's some employers that can't wait to get rid of that employee. I've been around this thing long enough to realize there's some friends that don't want that friend in their life anymore. And here's the reason somebody has become a person that's hard to live with instead of a person. Ah, I just can't live without him as I look at verse number 20 Jacob served seven years for Rachel and they seemed unto him but a few days for the love he had to her now I realize that there's people maybe even in this room who you did everything and you tried to be the one that your spouse needed and you understand just as anyone that there's guilt inside of your life you're not a perfect person but you did everything to try to hold it together maybe you're a preacher and you did everything to try to hold the church together maybe you're a spouse and you did everything to try to hold it together maybe you're a friend and you've done everything in your power to be the person that the other person can't live without and now you stand there scratching your head in wonder and you stand amazed at how you're left at the curbside can I say to you that Jacob in spite of his circumstances still decided he was going to be the person that others couldn't live without when Jacob finished those seven years if you know the story you know that Laban deceived Jacob and Laban, Laban gave Rachel's sister to Jacob instead he was tricked he was deceived and by the way Jacob was just getting what he sowed in return as Jacob was a deceiver now in his life he's reaping what he sowed but because of his love he did not let the circumstances detour him he did not let the scenario of the valley keep him from the one whom his soul loveth and child of God I want to encourage you today in your relationship with God be somebody who's motivated by love I want to encourage you today in your relationships with other people be someone who is motivated by love let me say this love did not quit on his dream girl love did not quit on his dream girl love did not allow his circumstances to detour him love eventually acquired the desire of his heart he was a man that said I want to be somebody that is dependable I want to be somebody of integrity I want to be somebody that others can't live without number three Jacob was magnified by the Lord turn to Genesis chapter 30 Jacob was magnified by the Lord look at what it says in verse 27 as well as verse number 30 chapter 30 verse 27 again Laban said unto him I pray thee if I have found favor in thine eyes tarry for I have learned by experience 
that the Lord hath blessed me for thy sake. Verse 30. For it was little which thou hadst before I came, and now is it now increased unto a multitude. And the Lord hath blessed me since my coming. And now when shall I provide for my own house as well? Let me preach on this simple truth for just a second. Not only did Laban know God was helping Jacob, but it was evidence in Jacob's life Jacob knew that God was helping him as well you see the word increased you see the word experienced you see the word blessing you see the word increased unto multitude you see how here's somebody that didn't have much but now he has so much because of someone else in his life there will be this testimony when somebody you know and somebody you love passes away that you just couldn't live without even if you didn't understand how much you couldn't live without them they are now gone from your presence and now you have a memory in your mind of this they were somebody that impacted me so much I have so much in my life because of who they were oh how I wish I could have them back again but it's something that we could never receive because death has happened death has swooped them away the plan of almighty God has taken place in their life or maybe in your life it's a Laban Jacob situation maybe there's something going on right now where you're about to lose somebody because that somebody says God is moving me on friends Laban could be a person that others couldn't live without but I believe Laban was enjoying the prosperity of another person so much He didn't care much about living the life he should live. A child of God in 2018, don't be satisfied living off the blessings of Pastor Smith. Don't be satisfied living off the blessings of Pastor Schneider. A child of God in 2018, don't be satisfied living off the lifestyle that honors God of your spouse or of your friend or of your employee or employer. Be a child of God that says, I will choose not to be a Laban I'll choose to be a Jacob I want to be somebody that others can't live without now I was taught this I was taught that you don't have to say it for others to know it you need to live it I tell young people the same thing when I go into churches and preach to youth groups. I go in and tell them, if you'll just go in and be a hard worker at that job, you will find out that the boss is going to say, where in the world did this young person come? These are a rarity. I want them to have this position in this place of business. I remember walking into Dairy Queen. I don't know how to stack ice cream on top of ice cream and make the little curly cue on top. They had to show me. I didn't have some natural ability when I was born out of the womb to mix up a blizzard. They had to teach me how to do that. And I get into Dairy Queen. I learn these things. And I just wanted to be a worker. And I get in. I work. I honor God with what I get. I get to work. I show up on time. I leave when they tell me to leave. I stay if they want me to stay longer. That happened quite a bit. And about a year after I had been there the boss came and the boss said we want to promote you to be a supervisor there were ladies in that place that had been there for four or five years and they had been wanting that position and I'd only been there for a year maybe not even that and now I have to hear what those ladies are saying about me (laughs) I have to see their looks through the ice cream machines ice cream running down their face because they just mixed up a blizzard and the ice cream machine isn't keeping up with the refrigeration process scowling at Justin (laughs) don't let that dictate to you who you're gonna be at that moment when people can't put up with the fact that you've got some integrity don't say well I'm just gonna back off and I'm gonna become lazy like everybody else hey 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 procrastination is the assassination of motivation and dear child of God you ought to be the kind of person that isn't afraid to roll up their sleeves and show the world what it means to be a workman instead of lazy 
teenager, as you grow up in this life, you have a great responsibility to show the world the light of Jesus Christ and not the darkness of this present world. You have a responsibility to live for Jesus and through that life that honors God, God can increase you and God can bring multitudes of blessing in your life. But think about it. What is he going to bless? Who is he going to bless? Is he going to bless the one that cares nothing about doing his work? Is he going to bless the one that just wants everything? Give me, give me, give me for selfish reasons. Is he going to bless the one who's living for their flesh instead of walking in the spirit? You answer that. You know God has a pathway for you today. I must finish by saying, no matter the circumstances, be the type of person others can't live without. My Where is the time gone this morning? Thank you for listening. But may we commit to be a people that other people can't live without. No matter the circumstance, no matter how trying it is, mothers, keep hanging in there. I know it's your day. Most importantly, it's God's day. Let's be a people that others can't live without. Let's show them the love of Jesus. And if you're here today without Jesus... Understand there's one that you need more than anyone else in your life. It's Jesus. Let's pray. Our Lord and Heavenly Fathers, we bow before you today. I pray that we'd submit to being a people that others can't live without. Lord, I pray that as I could go on and on and on about this, that you'd you'd help us today to just get the point. And just decide that we're going to be this type of person. We're going to be a people that others just say, I just, I need them in my life. But now, Lord, as we all have people in our life, the reason why we're blessed, I pray that that would not be a satisfactory thought for us, that we would say, I I don't want to be a Laban. I just don't want to be living off of somebody else's blessing. I want to live in such a way that I can be a blessing to others. Help us. And now, Lord, if there's somebody here that does not know your son Jesus as Savior, I pray that today would be the day where all that changes. And I ask it in Jesus' name. Let's stand to our feet together.